the end of that age. In the scriptures, the expression end of the world is frequently used. St. Peter tells us that the world came to an end in the deluge. It was not the earth which came to an end, merely that order or condition of things which prevailed prior to the deluge ceased there. A new world, a new order of things was there ushered in. This is in strict accordance with the proper translation of the Greek. The common translation, unfortunately, has deceived many. We would better read end of the age, not end of the world. Ages may end and be succeeded by other ages, but the Bible declares that the earth abideth forever, that God formed it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. It has never been thoroughly habitable, nor has it ever been inhabited in the proper sense of the term. The work of Messiah's kingdom will be to make God's footstool glorious and fit for those restored to his favor. His further work will be to uplift man and restore him to all that was lost in Eden and redeemed at Calvary. He will destroy only the incorrigible. In the new order of things started by Noah and his family, God allowed humanity to have its way and to work out its own schemes without divine interference, except in extreme cases. He allowed the world to learn lessons while he carried out his own great plan, of which redemption is the center and Messiah's kingdom the circumference for the recovery of mankind from their fallen estate. The development of God's plan has been long from the human standpoint, but not so from the divine, for we read, a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. And again, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. During six of these thousand year days, in which he rests or desists from interfering with the world's affairs, God has permitted a reign of evil, but his arrangements are complete, whereby Messiah, the Redeemer, will fully restore all the willing and obedient to all that Adam forfeited. Thank you.